Well, here's the first load of lumber. Here's the Moffat from Rupert Lumber. I don't remember the guy's name. And we're going to start unloading lumber. He's going very carefully. I can go in further if you like. drilling uh, these holes out instead of putting in J-bolts because these are interior bearing walls for this barn style shop we're doing and so we didn't want to put the J-bolts in as we poured a monolithic pour on the pad because we wanted them to be in the right spot and not have to mess up the concrete to try and get them in and so I'm drilling these out and putting in the wedge anchor bolts with epoxy um, to hold these into your walls and still they're spaced about every four feet just like you would a j-bolt um, and then use the epoxy to glue them in so we're doing two by six construction on this shop for two reasons one is for structure the other is we want good insulative value um, for the shop um, so we wanted we wanted those thicker walls on these interior walls we maybe could have got away with the 2 by 4 but we opted to go with the 2 by 6 wall instead so on on this part here where we wanted it open on the wings of the of the shop then we put in glue lamb beams they're a better price than an LBL um, for the size that was needed because we're having a floor above this floor for grandma's attic or whatever you want to call it and uh, and so we put in the glue lamb beams on there we also have the fire blocking here um, code requires if you're higher than 10 feet then you've got to have um, fire blocking in there actually eight feet and uh, and so so we've got the fire blocking in to well, just for that reason and it adds some extra strength to the walls on there um, then where we have the other walls coming in we're having some partition walls come in so we put in these partition T's 
using some short pieces of two by four because it's two, gonna be a two by four interior wall. Um, on some of them we yeah, use two, two by six. six for a two by six wall because we're gonna insulate that for an inside cold room. Uh, another thing we did here is we put in a French well. Um, this is where I will park my truck. And so we put um, large rocks and gravel down below this. We'll put a grate on this hole. And you, know, you can dig various sizes depending on how, how much moisture you might end up having. Um, in this case, we went about three and a half, four feet deep, about a foot wide by four feet long. And then we just put this pipe in here when we poured. And then that will, anyway, we can, and, and, it's, and it's sloped, it's got about a half inch. Slope goes out about four feet all the way around this and so like I say when I park my truck here then that water will run down to that French well um, prevent it from running everywhere else on the top. So as you're building this shop you know on your headers you got to have enough depending on the weight that's going above them we used what's Called it. Well, these are a two by eight sandwich header, so we've got a piece of half inch OSB in the middle of them, and then you have two pieces of two by eight. Maybe a little overkill on a three foot door, but that's what was recommended. And then on the garage door, 10 foot garage door, we use two 11 and three quarter inch LVLs um, for that header. Again, we're We've got another floor above this, so there's going to be quite a bit of weight up there. We're putting 14 inch eye joists above that, hopefully with a clear span of 20 feet. And so actually it'll be 19 foot clear span. But, um, and so that's why the extra header there. I like to go with a 2 by 6 below and a 2 by 6 above, or a 2 by 4 depending on what you're building with just to clean it up and easier to trim around for me. Um, then as we put the walls up, you can see the bracing going out to some stakes and then some lateral bracing while we're working on these walls, getting them stabilized before we put on the sheathing and, and uh, to help in case there's wind and keep them straight up and down on that. Um, so it seems to be pretty sturdy uh, for what we're doing. This is a two-part um, epoxy. This is PC concrete. There's a lot of them out there. And so it's two parts. So when you put it in a caulk gun, and squeeze it it'll come out and then you put it in one of these and it mixes it as it comes out of there and then you put it down in the holes you've drilled for these bolts you don't want to put very much at all just how much did you put about a third of the hole just barely a squeeze this is one kind of a wedge bolt bought from Home Depot get your washer and the nut on so that it's about flush with the top or a little past it so you can hammer on it put it in We'll tighten that down in the morning once the epoxy is set. Okay, the other style go ahead. You take the pin out. is these pin kind. We take the pins out, and this is one way of getting them out is using two hammers. 
and again just barely barely squeeze just barely a squeeze yep good leave the pin out Getting some epoxy out of the top, which we'd rather not, but it's Okay, so after you put them on, just barely snug it down with this, because if you snug it down too much, you'll just pull it right back out of there, but with this epoxy coming out, you're not going to have another chance to, to do it. I'm going to pull that down. Thank you. 